Hello and welcome to a new video. In this video I'll be doing three different versions of the covered bridge um, on three different surfaces and each one of these being a fairly fast technique to do being that we're starting with um, an inherent colored background that we're going to be stamping our imagery onto. Okay? Now a lot of the times that we do um, scenic stamping we stamp our imagery first and then we start coloring it afterwards. But in this case, we're starting with colored backgrounds first, and we're just stamping over it with um, our impressions and then building on it from there. But because the backgrounds are already inherently colored, we don't have to do too much to it. So we just kind of create um, an interesting background first, and then we just go from there. In this scene right here, I'm doing a quarter page piece of Star Dream Lapis Lazuli. Um, Star Dreams are iridescent papers, and the lapis lazuli is the name of the color. Kind of get a little tongue twisted there. All right, so in the background, I'm adding a white brilliance ink to create this foggy, kind of cloudy background. And the reason for this is because if I don't do that, and I just stamp over the top of this fairly dark paper, black ink isn't going to show up very much over a dark background, okay? So what I do is I do this thing called blocking out, and I block out some of the paper, or a lot of it, with some varied um, shades of this white ink. I apply it a little bit thicker in some areas, meaning that, uh, you know, to represent a stronger light in that area. In other areas, I just kind of have it uh, kind of, you know, a little bit you might even call it splotchy, or just used very sparingly. You don't have to get things laid down perfectly smooth. All right, so this is a black impression, and I'm doing this with the Brilliance Black ink. Now, if you're doing this on something like a non-coated dark cardstock or something like that, you don't have to use the Brilliance inks. The Brilliance inks work great on kind of coated papers that are slightly less um, porous so that they dry or they can be heat set on this surface very quickly, okay? Filling in with some additional sedge filler right here that comes in that same stamp set. Going in here with some additional little tiny rocks, small, just for a little bit of extra texture, okay? And I do add in some um, additional uh, trees in the background from that uh, covered bridge scene. All right, now here's what I'm thinking about doing here. I'm thinking about having some strong visual lead-ins and I'll do it with these bridge um, stamps, okay? I'm just gonna use a small portion of them just for, you know, um, a strong visual lead-in into the scene. So I'm using the left side of the smaller version of the fence that comes in the set and I'm using the right side and just about, I don't know, about half of that uh, stamp right there. But it kind of sets a nice foundation for the composition like that. And again, what I call a visual lead-in. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm adding in some additional white pigment ink to kind of sandwich the impressions into the scene. I have some white pigment ink in the background that we started off with. Now, stamped all the imagery, and I'm stamping some of the foreground to give it that atmosphere and to really create kind of an evocative looking scene. Adding in some white highlights with my white acrylic paint pen. Adding in some white impressions with that same tiny rock small, but doing it in white, kind of a yin yang type of texture on that, uh, um, on that dirt road some highlights on tops of my clouds. Top lit bottom clouds, bottom lit top clouds, okay? The clouds that are coming in over the moon are being bottom lit. Okay, so it kind of adds in a nice little, I don't know, kind of highlighting into the piece and a stronger sense of a kind of light direction. It kind of brings certain areas to life a little bit by having those kind of sparkly little um, highlights. Um, in various areas and on various objects. Now 
Okay, and the viewers of this um, card called it Frosty Blue Morning. Okay, now in this scene right here, I'm going to test out a... I'm guessing this is a 20-year-old big and juicy rainbow pad. Now, I figured the colors are probably going to be merged by now, but to what extent, I didn't know. I just opened this one for the first time, and yeah, the colors are a little bit muddy. There's not a lot of variation in it, so I'll show you what I do with this um, foundation. Now, doing these briared backgrounds can really kind of expedite the entire process of creating a scene because you have this inherent... I don't know, usually it's a sunset -y type of um, color scheme, sunrise, those types of things. But I'll show you what I do to this one right here. And it's again, it's because all these inks merged on that very old pad. It's been sitting around for a very long time. The pad's new in terms of uh, it never being used before, but it's, it's very old in terms of uh, kind of the shelf life. Okay, so I'm really kicking up the intensity with some additional inks. Um, I'm just using from additional pads here, okay, just to brighten things up, to darken things up, and to make that background a little bit more interesting. I don't like tossing things out that I start. I just like to try to maximize it, so there's all kinds of different things you can do. All right, here's some yellow. Look how much brighter that got. Okay, and that top part's looking a little anemic now that the bottom portion is just so bright, so I'll add in some extra tones in there. And I was talking about, you know, some kind of a Northern Lights video that I saw where there was a really brilliant um, kind of a crimson red transitioning into yellow base. I can't really do that on here because I already have that kind of plum background, but we can make that uh, background a little bit brighter here. If you haven't done brayering before, it's really fun. Just kind of keep moving it. Lift and tap, lift and roll, you know, as they say. Um, to really smooth out that, um, you know, those those tones in there. All right, so see that? A little bit more of a transitioning um, tone there. A lot brighter, too, you know, with these uh, Marvy inks. You can mix and match. You don't have to use Marvy inks, but just, uh, I don't know, try to kick things up a little bit if you run into kind of a dull background, then add more ink. Okay, now I was looking at this, and while I was thinking about those northern lights, I thought, let's do something to this background. It's still looking a little bit boring to me, so let's try to kind of create those curtains that are so um, kind of apparent, or so present in a northern light situation. So that was just a kind of a medium brown. Now I'm going on here with a darker brown. Or maybe this one was a black, I don't remember. You just kind of keep working it. Um, if it's not... Okay, now this one's the black right here. But see, I, I start off with lighter tones and I eventually work up to black. A lot of people want to get to black instantly. And they sometimes if they take too big of a leap in terms of value from one color to the next, it goes on a little bit less kind of gracefully, okay? So you want to move through those intermediate tones if you have them. All right, so going for my impression right here, I have a lot of ink already laid down on this paper, so I hold this down quite a bit longer before I lift up, okay? And I'm just doing this one with a dye-based ink. And it's because I planned on coloring it, and I didn't want to have a bunch of uh, pigment ink on the surface there, okay? I'm not going to do extensive coloring on this, because we already have that tone in the background. All right, so adding in some extra treats here, just to uh, build that area up a little bit, to give this um, covered bridge a little bit more depth, okay? And again, you know, there's not a lot that you can do to this um, scene because you already have all those colors already established throughout the impression because it's that, you know, that's the colors of the background. But I thought we can go for some extra texture here with some um, splatter painted white paint. Okay, this one happens to be the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. But look at that area up top there. I thought it really brought it to life. Okay, now. 
I'm going for some highlights down here, but they're not stark white highlights. I'm using um, these um, paint pens um, by Artistra. They're extra fine paint pens. And in the 40 pack set, there's a lot of different values of different colors. So this one happens to be like a, a tan and there's like a peach color. So I can get these much more muted highlights, okay, than going on with like a stark white or something like that. And that worked really good and kind of, you know, um, establishing a little bit more of a three-dimensional look throughout this piece in a color that's a lot more uh, related to the color scheme of this piece. See, there, I don't have like a white moon up top or something like that casting like white light like on the lapis lazuli scene. Okay, let's give this scene a little bit more depth. So I'm stamping these branches. I, I thought this could use a little bit more depth and texture and just visual interest by stamping out these images in the VersaFine Claire and then coating it with extra fine clear embossing powder and we'll emboss these foreground images, the images up top and the images down below. Okay, so it gives it a little bit more um, visual depth, it gives it more texture because you have these raised objects and you know embossing is just fun what can you you know what can i say all right then you have those raised leaves you know it kind of stands to reason they'd be a little bit more the three-dimensional part of the scene because of the things that are closest to us all right alaskan twilight bridge i think Alaskan Twilight and Twilight Bridge came up, so I thought, okay, let's just throw them, the two of them in together. There might not be a lot of, you know, covered bridges in Alaska, if there are any, but why not? This is a viewer um, scene uh, naming um, channel. <laughs> All right, so photo stamping. What we're going to do is we're just going to stamp on top of a photo print and this photo print is photo paper okay i have this uh, bunch of cards four by six cards printed out at costco you can print them at on your home inkjet printer as well i have a link to my Flickr album of uh, clouds in the description section of this video free for download you can print them out do whatever you want enlarge whatever but photo prints are really great for dye-based ink impressions. You don't have to use a specialty ink to stamp on photo paper. You just can't blend dye-based inks very well on photo paper. The dye-based inks just dry too fast. Okay, on this one, I am going to just go ahead and add this overhanging tree limb here right off the bat. Okay. Now, this particular photo... There was a lot of grays in it, okay? There's not a lot of white area, but that's why I wanted to do it, I thought. I don't think I've used this one before. All right, but I do want to bring out some lighter areas in this um, card, mainly the top of that uh, covered bridge. So I'll show you what I do um, to remedy that um, later on in the creation of this scene. All right, now this, like I said, you can't really color very well the dye-based inks because it just dries so fast that you can't blend it. But alcohol inks work fantastically on photo paper. You can color, you can color lift, you can blend. You can, If you lay a color down and you don't like it, you can go with your blender pen and kind of take it right out of there, uh, you know, to some extent. Okay, so I'm adding in these uh, different tones in here. This is a little bit of a tannish brown. Okay. I know I'm going into the greens, but I think it makes those greens a little bit more earthy looking. All right, so this is another type of little brownish tinge. Okay. Just trying to uh, render that covered bridge a little bit more. And I'm not a great, you know, practitioner of uh, alcohol inks at all. I don't use them that often to do a lot of extensive blending. So it tends to look a little bit, I don't know, remedial, let's say. A little bit splotchy and spotty. Okay, this is what brings everything together, though. The white pigment ink, okay? 
So I'm adding some of that up into the sky, getting a little bit of that white pigment ink looking texture up there and light, okay? Because I'm going to have a lot of that white pigment ink down below. So I'm creating a situation where, you know, that same type of texture is right at that light source, okay? All right, so going down here. And I didn't lay down any blocking out or something like that, like on the lapis lazuli. But I am kind of sandwiching that image in between these different kind of mistier elements. The cloudy misty element was inherently in the photograph itself because it was a photograph of clouds. So in a way you're kind of bringing a cloud to the front of this image as well in the form of, you know, like a, a suspended moisture in the air being illuminated you know, thus being missed. Okay, so here's what I do to remedy my dark rooftop. Okay, I like to have it look toplit, so I'm applying some white pigment ink like that, and there we have a toplit covered bridge. So now that bridge looks a lot more three-dimensional that way because it is lit differently, okay? Now this scene to me, I really like that sky up there, but <laughs> and it didn't occur to me at this point in the uh, in the creation of this scene, but when I kind of held it out, um, I figured out what to do later on, and you'll see what I do with that. Okay, so this is, um, again, I'm using the colored uh, highlights here, but this scene does have a lot of white in it, okay? So I do use my white paint pen, like right here, to create some additional highlights reflecting that white light. So even that little tiny bit on that rooftop there, it kind of really uh, makes the point of that roof, um, I don't know, kind of stand out a little bit. Now there I added a little bit too much white pigment ink, so I just wiped it off, okay? All right, so I thought I was done with that one, but then, I don't know, I looked at it and I thought, oh, that, that card right there is just, if there is ever um, a photo that can utilize some light beams in it, it would be this one. Okay, here's what we do. We're going to do a very light application of this white pigment ink. So light that you can see through it, okay? Don't put uh, like a super harsh beam down. I guess you could, but it probably wouldn't integrate with the scene very well. You know what I mean? It would really stand out. So kind of go in here with um, Kind of the spirit of adding like a very light powder onto your scene or something like that. We're not doing that because white pigment ink is a liquid, you know, wet medium. But that's kind of the look you're going after. Just very lightly applied, okay? I mean, you can add a heavier coating out of it, you know, if that's the look you want. But it's always better to kind of build up to it. So I'm tapping on here with a very dry cotton ball. Okay, I have white ink in it, but it's very dry on there. Now look what I do on this one, on this beam right here. I kind of go behind that tree, and, uh, you know, it just gives that beam a little bit more three-dimensional, I don't know, a three-dimensional appearance, okay? This beam right here is going to go behind those trees in the background. And they say you should compose in odd numbers, so I'll add one more beam to make it five. And I'll do a very thin ray, just to vary it from the other ones, okay? Adding a few more highlights right around that beam. You have heavenly beams of hope. <laughs> Great names by uh, the viewers of this uh, video here. All right, so you have those three different scenes, three completely different um, techniques here. Um, going in here and adding in a little bit of a brighter um, stars in there, kind of doing a little bit of Orion maybe with the belt and sword. And because this one is a little bit this purplish tinge, why not give it some little pink stars to kind of blend in with the background, maybe even a violet one or two. And anyways, you have three different variations here, three completely different techniques. You don't always have to work on just a white piece of paper. 
and you can get some pretty dramatic results in a very you know quick order all right so thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed it